Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. The Z63 rumor train is heating up. Nikon rumors just dropped a new set of rumors about the Z63 and I want to cover those in the video and share some information about what I think the camera is going to get based on what we've seen in these rumors. Before we begin, please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links for items to purchase in the description area of each video. So we've been awaiting the Z63 for a very long period of time and now the rumor train has started. So let's go over some of the information that Nikon rumors had put out. I had actually recorded another video that I was going to post, but now that we got some new specifications, well, new rumors, let's dive into those and see what we're getting. But before we get there, let's cover what was put out a couple weeks ago and then we'll go to the new stuff. So they're saying it's gonna be a new 24.5 megapixel sensor, better with ergonomics compared to the Z6, 6K ProRes raw video support, pixel shift, which is cool, very angle LCD screen, higher frames per second than the Z6 II, Nikon Z8, a similar focusing system, mechanical electronic shutter, hybrid body design between the Z6 and the Z8, and of course, you know that there's a photo that came out a couple of days back that kind of showed what it's going to look like. It's like a mini Z8. Now let's look at the new stuff. The new stuff says 24.5 megapixel sensor. I don't know why they added that, but it's not saying it's new. Dual X speed 7 processors, ISO 100 to 64,000, 9 subject detection AF like the Z9, 310 single point AF, IBIS. I could say more about that, six stops, eight stops. Uh, video recording 6K 30P, 4K 120, N-Log, an HLG internal recording, CIF Express B, XQ, uh, C, and plus SD card. No NRAW, better cooling design. All right, so let me give you my take on this. I've always said in my past videos that I think they're gonna use the same Z62 ZF sensor. The first information that we got said it's going to be a new sensor. The second one said it's going to be just a 24 megapixel sensor. So we are not exactly sure what's going to be. And of course, we're still kind of, I guess, in the early stages. If they say it's going to be in the first quarter of 2024, you know, there's also rumors about a Z9H or something. My speculation on that is that they will probably just improve the Z9's system, um, give us an option for the 24 megapixel or somewhere in that region. and that should allow the sensor to offload that information and allow to 125 frames per second shooting. But we're not gonna dive deeper into that one. The other thing I thought about is if they do a new 24 point something megapixel sensor like the A9, it could be a stack sensor as well. I kind of hope that maybe it was a stack sensor in the Z63. If it's a new sensor, that'd be a hope. You know, eliminate rolling shutter issues, get a faster readout. So some of the things that I'm seeing here, you know, dual XP7, like why would you need that? Well, what, what are you gonna be putting in the camera to need that, realistically speaking? Are you gonna have some specific AI features like the A7R5, you know, human pose estimation and all that stuff? Does it need a separate processor for that? Who knows, but when I see that, I get a little bit excited. Can we see somebody what I call content, solo content creator features, you know, like that I can be baking in the kitchen, I wanna walk around some places, just me alone, sit up on a tripod, click on something, and then they start recording. I know Matt Irwin records in like 8K, and then he uses the software to kind of zoom in on himself, and kind of put him like a different edge while he was standing in the center, but because you have all that resolution, you can move things around on the frame, so the final output looks like, you know, you're working with multiple cameras. So these things are optional that can be done now with the Z8 and Z9, but having like the Sony cameras that, you know, you have that AI thing built in there where you can select a part of the screen, it tracks you as you move around. It's basically cropping the, uh, a section of the um, sensor to utilize the follow around the screen. So maybe that second processor, if it's going to get one, would take over that kind of work, but we'll see. The ISO range is very similar to the ZF sensor. Again, kind of same, maybe it's going to be the same sensor, but who knows. Subdetection AF, same as Z9, 
that would be awesome. Plus, if it has all the same features that the ZF has, you know, the vibration reduction based on the focus point, manual focus, sub detection, you know, all those things the ZF get that we were hoping that will come in the Z6 III. Yeah, I think that'd be fantastic. And of course, you know, the, the Z9 now has the subject detection where they have like a bird area separate, the A7R5 or like insect, animal, birds. So maybe there'll be a breakout, who knows? We'll see. Single point AF, 310 of those. Yeah, for photos, sometimes you want to go single point and you want to have a good amount to work with. So that's not bad to have. IBIS, so I mentioned. IBIS, didn't say much about it. We know that the ZF currently has the best IBIS system of any Nikon cameras. It stops on the photo side and on the video side. It, I find it pretty stable. If you saw the video that I put out when I first tried out the ZF and I walked around with it inside the area and then I stabilized it and I compared it to my um, Z8. I think it was about two or three videos ago when I was complaining about some of the things that I'd like to see in the Z8. Um, you can see that the stabilization system in the software could clean it up even better. And of course, I would love to see something like what Sony does, you know, get the gyro data. Well, I think Sony does it and Blackmagic does it. We can pull the gyro data and utilize that to give you better stability because I'm having some issues when I try to do that with the Z8. It doesn't come out the rest, but the ZF is looking good. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of iris or, well, no, not or, and looking like Panasonic when you're walking where it just gets rid of all those footfalls and just keep it nice and steady. I love that. So let's see what we get. 6K30 and 4K120. Now, if it's a new sensor, we could see 4K120 full frame. That would be nice. I mean, the entire area of the sensor, that'd be a cool thing to have. Right now, we're getting 4K60 on the current ZF sensor where it's cropped, just like the Z6 II. If it's a newer sensor and it's not cropped, that'd be cool. We'll see. I mean, as far as we know right now, for most of the sensors out there, most of them are doing some kind of cropping when you have 4K120. The A9 is one of the few, if, uh, yeah, that's going to do basically full sensor, you know, no cropping. 4K 120. 6K 30, that's fine. We could probably see 24 and 25 in there as well, which is not bad. And I figure, since I did mention ProRes RAW, you can do that up to 6K 30 ProRes RAW in camera. It says no in RAW, which I've always said, I don't believe in RAW would work in that side of the body. If they're doing it external, it'll be external to some kind of recorder. Well, I said RAW externally, It'll be basically Atomos because, you know, they use their own proprietary stuff. If it's internal to the body, it's going to be NRAW. But having ProRes RAW on board, that's, that's still pretty good. So you can go all the way up to HQ and forget there's another level above that one to give you better quality. CF Express B and SD card. Let me talk about this for a moment. I just got a new 4.0 SD card reader and 4.0 memory card, CF Express. Pretty quick stuff. In recording with the Z8 in here in um, Southeast Asia, if I don't have the fan going on, uh, there you see I can get the camera to overheat. Recently, I put a video about that, and I've been doing some tests since then and utilizing my SD cards to record. The SD card that I have is a 300 megabits on the read side and 250 on the right side, and they can 
take up to UHD 8K. So you can record up to 8K on an SD card. So the Z63, 6K will be fine. Now, if you go ProRes or RAW, you definitely need something faster. The couple faster current gen SD cards that can do up to 299 on the right, according to what they said, Next Storage has one. But there's also the SD Express specification that should be coming out soon. With that, you probably won't need to get a CF Express card, or you know, if you already have one, you can still use it. That can go up to like 800 megabits per second, and the newer, I think it's the 9.0 specification, I think, will get you all the way up to 3000, just like the CF Express cards. But who knows when that's coming? Could we see that introduced on the Z63? I don't know, but they're saying it's going to have CF Express and SD. So we'll see. We know those of us who had the early Z6, we got an upgrade to go from um, XQD to go all the way up to uh, CF Express. So uh, jumping back in and talking about cooling now, it says better cooling design. What does that mean? The ZF has a slightly wider body than the Z6, slightly taller. So it should be better and actually thicker as well. I mean, I've speculated that the body of what I would say for myself, I'd like the body to be thicker. I would mind a Z8 type body, including a fan. And, you know, I've shown this multiple times as far as what the fan looks like on this camera. It's like right in the back there. Yes, it kind of makes the body a bit thicker. But when you look at it, it's not that much thicker. So on this side, you know, on the Panasonic uh, S1H, there is an area there and, uh, you know, this. What's the other one? The Canon R5C is a much bigger area in the back for cooling. But if you have it here where the heat, sorry, the vent comes in, that's not bad. This camera, it's on the bottom, right? Air comes in on the bottom and the exhaust through the side. The body itself is that, that much thicker overall when you're looking at it, right? So think about that. Having even just a, that small amount of bump, the area that you hold on to the camera on this side here, having that much and still being able to have a fan on the, the camera, that's fine. You know, I hear people say, hey, I don't want to have a fan because that's going to be an area that you could have weather sealing issues. But the way these fans are designed, they're not internal, they're not cooling the internals of the camera like blowing directly on it. It's that back area. You know, normally when you flip your screen on the other cameras, you can see the back of the camera. That's basically back there. That's that section where the fan is basically cooling that middle plate that's back there to exhaust the heat off the camera. The new Panasonic S5 does it through the, um, the EVF area. I don't really like that style. I prefer it to be vented out to the side but we'll see who knows fuji does a different design where it's basically once the screen flips out you can stick a fan on there screw it in and cool the camera that way for long recording with that said i know some photographers hate having fans and don't want having a camera but i want to ask you guys would you be opposed to having a fan that's built just like what i showed you guys in this body to kind of, you know, keep things cool, or would you rather have no fan at all and the camera overheats and the camera goes for a long period of time? If you're a photographer, you don't care about fans, so that's not for you, so you don't have to discuss this one, but for those of you guys who shoot video and photo, which style would you prefer? A fan that you can screw onto the back of the camera because it's gonna have a flip out screen Personally, talking about the screen, I'd rather it be like the Panasonic S1H where it tilts off the body, but I also want to be able to tilt down as well for photography or flip it out to the side and multi-angle type of screen, uh, display like the A7R5. Which one would you prefer? Because if it has that and it has this kind of setup when it comes to cooling, you know, that's kind of getting close to the Panasonic uh, style, which to me, it's not bad if it's done correctly and it's not thick on the back of the camera and doesn't stick out like the R5C. I can have that. So let me know which one you guys prefer. 
if there's anything inside the specification that I've been missed about what is expected, put it in the comments area. I'd like to hear from you guys as far as what you want to see in this camera, what you expect, what you think they could do or what they could do without. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed my prediction as far as what I'd like to see and what I hope would come in this camera. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi.